Welcome to Wales, best of the west. And as part of this series, between me, Ollie and mine, we're going to take you to a couple of places across Wales. So tune in and see what the secrets are off the Welsh coast. in northwest Wales where we're going to be diving two of my favourite sites so these are going to be two shore dives so they are Porthyskadan a small bay on the north coast of Penllyn and Porthyskadan which will be the seagrass bed there which is one of the largest and densest seagrass beds in Wales so these are two sites that I often go to and both completely different sites so Porthyskadan is a reef site with lots of variety of fish species and large kelp forests further out the bay and the middle of it is quite a sandy bay. It's really sheltered and really popular with divers. And then we have Portishine, which is a large seagrass bed and it's quite dense. This is an important habitat, so there's a variety of reasons that this is a really great site to dive. So we're looking forward to going and show you what we can find at these sites and the variety of species that there are. But we're not going to just do them in day, we're going to take you there at night and show you how things change especially at night when different species tend to come out and it's easy to see other species that tend to hide away in the day. So let's go and see what it's like. Hidden away on the rugged north coast of Penllyn is the narrow sheltered bay of Porthyskadan, where the northerly headland acts as a natural breakwater making it ideal for diving. It's a bay that I first learned to dive in and is a site which I often dive throughout the year. Considering its small size, you never really know what you'll see within the bay and it often provides surprising moments such as sharing underwater time with octopus. At the end of the track you arrive at the car park which overlooks then the dive site itself and from the car park it's only a short walk down the slipway to the site entry and conveniently there is a nice bench there which you can use to set up and then get ready then just do the walk down the hill. So once arriving at the car park it's definitely worth walking over to the North Headland just to have a better idea of what the site looks like, get some bearings, get some plans in and especially if you haven't been here before it's it just gives you a better view of the site and always worth taking a further look. So what we're going to do is go to the car kit up and then go in the water and see what we can find and show you how spectacular this little shore dive is. Scanned, which is a small bay just on the north side of the Hill Peninsula. It's a sheltered bay which looks out west, where there's a north wall that breaks the water, and then there's a wall that runs along the coastline. The bay itself has a variety of marine life and a variety of habitats. Along the walls, you can find a range of algal, where closer in it's fucoid, and as you get deeper west along the walls, you can get into the kelp forests. This means there's a diverse range of life, particularly wrasse species. One of the species which is the Ballon Rass, found in a variety of sizes and different colours. And they're such a tropical looking fish. Along here you can find the strawberry red up to the green. But they're all perfectly camouflaged to the habitat. 
centre of the bay, here comes more sand. And this is a place where you can find a range of camouflage species that bury themselves under the sand. But they'll be hiding away. So hopefully when we head here tonight, we'll, uh, we'll see them at night. And hopefully they'll be out of their burrows and scattering around the reef. So hidden here amongst the algae is a 15 spine sticklebutt. They're an interesting fish species, and as you can see, they're really well camouflaged amongst the algae. They come in a variety of different colours that just help them blend in. It takes a keen eye to try and pick one out amongst all the different colours of the seaweed or algae. So 15 spine sticklebutt get their name because of the 15 spine that are found on the dorsal side, which is their top side. So we can see if we get a tight shot and show these little spines. Once you get to outside the bay, you get to the large kelp forest are full of life. Hence the deep water these heads play around. They're really, really cool. They're definitely worth exploring a bit further. Oh, look at this. Look at this guy. Uh, where's he gone? Towards the end of the wall, the deep water tend to find some lesser spotted cat sharks. Whether they're hunting or resting. They're the most common shark species that we have off the large coast. Jellyfish, we can see made because of the compass like bearings on the top of the jellyfish. So here we have some leopard spotted goby. We can see named because they're leopard spotted patterns. More found in the deep parts of Potskada on the outskirts. It'd be interesting to see how this all changes when we dive here later at night and where the species come out that we can't find here today. Hopefully we can find those bobtail squid and also see if any cat sharks are hunting at night. And I'm sure we can get some footage of the 50s by stickleback also hunting. Because we couldn't get it in the day so we'll have to look at it at night.
forest, you can see them a lot more frequently at night. There's a few here hunting around the light. They're just taking it here and using the plankton which are attached by the light and the potato on it. Along with all the other species such as the stickleback. You can see how they take their body to the S shape for them to quickly strike their prey. So during the day we came across one or two spider crabs just here wandering around the bay itself but this is one thing that we don't see or I've never seen here in Pontescadden are these large aggregations of spider crabs but there are a couple of two or three spider crabs high this is something you actually see further down in South Wales in places like Simbrides Bay when they come in in large aggregations early summer So it's a big surprise actually see them here on the north side of the field where the water is a bit colder but we usually only see one or two individuals. And over the years as water starts to warm up we've been seeing more and more aggregations like this. But the reason they come here is their mating aggregations which allows them to mate. It's really interesting to see this large number of them here and if you look closely at the females, some of them are already brooding eggs. And you can just see that they're fanning it to keep the eggs oxygenated. Really, really interesting to see this. amongst the reef, see what's happening beneath all these crevices. Hopefully we can find something good. There's an octopus. We don't often see one here in Pontscadan, but we tend to find them some of the further sites on the reefs. So it's really good to see one in shore. I can see if someone's hunting at this. I don't care about that this evening. So much to see. We managed to get footage of the 15 by Sticklewax hunting. We had some bobtail squid. We're also really, really fortunate to find a octopus that came across us. It's an amazing dive, even day and night. Definitely worth going to do. I'm looking forward to the next part of the trip where we're going to go to the seagrass in Portishide. I know they're really important habitat you get off the Welsh coast. And Portishide is fortunate because it's one of the biggest densest beds that we have. 
so much species and so much to see there. Hope you're looking forward to it. Next, we will be heading east along the coast to one of the most important habitats found along the Welsh coast at Portlingheim. Join us as we reveal some of the incredible benefits of seagrass meadows and see what secrets are hidden within.